What's going on out there, everybody? This is uh, Samuel Leggett here. Got my man Lucas. We are about to tackle the now original. <laughs> um, <laughs> now the HBO Max feature film. Which is crazy <laughs> because when we saw it back in February, was it even it was a what? Sony, it was a Sony Classics film when yeah. we saw it in February. Yeah, and it was supposed to be going in theaters, I think the beginning of March or the end of February, I couldn't remember. It was, uh, April 2nd, it had it initially had an April 2nd release date yeah, for yeah. this movie. And then it got pushed to August and then they sold it to HBO Max and now here we are as it got released in October. Yep, so this is the thing, we haven't seen it since then, so bear with me. <laughs> I'm going to say that, but it did oh, leave a lasting impression on me and Lucas individually. I feel like we both tried to review it at the time, but then the pandemic hit and it was just kind of like it was. It, it, it became like a second thing. Like it was yeah. something that we weren't even worrying about reviewing. Yeah. But the story, I'll go ahead and read the synopsis really quick. 14 year old Mouse joins a midnight clique. A famous group of Baltimore bike, no, I'm sorry, dirt bike riders who rule the summertime streets. Now, that kind of is a small, minuscule synopsis because it's Mouse, I think it's best friend Lamont, and then Sweet God, who's kind of like the, the bigger guy. And they really are just like a close, you know, friend group. And Mouse kind of lives with his mom and um, I don't want to spoil anything with it, but there is an interesting backstory with um, who Mouse's brother was and how that connected with also uh, Meek Mill's character. Mm -hmm. um, and all of it does revolve around some really interesting things that happen um, that go sideways very fast. But the thing I really reason, another reason why I really wanted to bring Lucas into this is I actually grew up in the South. And so, you know, I've been in the DMV now, I think maybe like 10 years now, but um, for him, I know for a fact, like a lot of this he's seen and he has something to actually come in and talk about. But in terms of the authenticity, Lucas, uh, when it comes to just, you know, Mouse, his group and the biker clique and just the environment, did they embody Baltimore uh, effectively in your personal opinion? And did you want to Ping off of that and let's go from there. Great. That's a great jumping off point because I, I have forgot his name was Mouse. That's how I was <laughs> that the movie. <laughs> but now as everything is coming back to me, especially what I remember is the lingo was dead on. If you know anything about anyone from Baltimore, it's a certain it's a certain slang they put on the end of every term. Like instead of two, is two is like an extra D H at the end of every word for everybody from Baltimore. So for the moment I first saw it, that's the first thing that jumped out on me because that was extremely authentic that you were able to even pull off the accent with everybody there, including someone like uh, Meek Mill who also pulls off the accent. And then with the dirt bike community organization type of environment that's in this film, I've known about my entire life in the DMV area. Like, this is something big. This is something lots of people do. Um, the bike fest and stuff of that in Baltimore, yes, things of that nature happen. This was on a grander scale to me, mm. but it still rang as authentic, mainly through the characters. The kids, the moms in this story, everything blends to it being extremely authentic to Baltimore and what Baltimore represents. This was, I remember when I first saw it, I said this was kind of like a love song to Baltimore because mm. unfortunately, what most people know of Baltimore has to either come from the corner or the wire. Yeah. And while that is an element of Baltimore, this is a different element of Baltimore, different element of black people in Baltimore. This was yeah. more of a celebration 
type of feel, even though, granted, some very tragic things happen and some circumstances can lend itself towards reminding people of the wire and things of that nature, it still comes across just as a grand expression of the joy people get living in Baltimore. And that's what touched me the most when I initially saw this movie. Yeah. And I mean, I can kind of speak on even like the kids, the mm-hmm. kids, it was something about the believability, even though mm-hmm. yeah, the kids were doing stupid things, they were putting themselves in terrible situations, but based on the surrounding background and based on where they're at, where they, who they look up to, mm-hmm. um, there was something about like, you know, this feeling that this was a realistic character. Yes. Like when you think about Mouse, when you think about even like his friend Lamont, who Lamont, you know, kind of like looked at like the pretty boy, but he kind of was like trying to be cool. But then he started to go down a totally different path, kind of like Mouse did. Yeah. And just watching that progression, it is it's equally amazing from an acting standpoint to see such young kids be able to authentically do it. Because it kind of seemed like, yo, they just living it. But mm-hmm. I, I tell they are, you know, acting like at the same time. And I think that that's where I have to give a lot of credit to it because they made sure that you felt like this was really something that was plausible as well as mm-hmm. authentic to, um, you know, the, the actual environment and actual kids. And I think that they did a great job with it. Another thing that they actually added in was uh, Meek Mills. Meek Mills plays a really interesting role in his connection with Mouse because he's kind of like with his top dog of the clique. Um, but he also has got a, a rap sheet and he also is um, trying to keep his nose clean, but he's also got a lot of dirt. And I actually thought that Meek Mill did a great job. I think that he, from a, not like he had like a masterful Oscar worthy performance, but I felt <laughs> like he played his role well. Like it wasn't like cheesy. It wasn't like too overcooked. It seemed like a pretty well grafted character that he just was like, this is my character and I'm, I'm going to do it. I was curious what you think about like even him and um, what's my man, uh, William C- Catlett, who plays the tech. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you know him from um, Black Lightning, uh, it's my man. Wow, that's the first thing. Was it, isn't it Love Is? Love Is. Yeah. Yeah, so you got to go, go back to what, you know, <laughs> away from Black Lightning. Wait, yeah. away from Black Lightning. But, <laughs> but yeah, like, what did you think about, like, I mean, like the older crew as well? Like, I mean, of course, the mom, Meek Mill, him. What did y'all think? What did you think about their? Well, for I'll focus on Meek first because that was the most poignant character in this story. Normally, yeah. when you do any form of a street story, you need the OG character that the other characters can look up to, but the yeah. OG who's learned from their lessons and trying to make their life better. And that's the role he plays here. Again, it's not, they don't call on him to do a lot, but when they call on him to do anything in this film, he does it well. Yeah. I, I, again, I was going, I'm going to keep on saying, I remember from when I saw it, I remember when I saw it and I said, man, he nails this role. Like yeah. as the mentor, as, as the guy to look up to, the guy who doesn't want you to do wrong and he's trying to get you to learn from his mistakes, but also give you a better way out. And yeah. Meek, Meek nails it. Um, very reminiscent of, I don't know why the first name that pops in my head is like T.I. and A.T.L. Where yeah. I'm not asking you to go over the top, but I'm asking you to stay in a lane and operate in that lane and operate well. And that's what Meek does in this entire movie. He was yeah. the most surprising part for me because I was not expecting his performance to be as good as it is in this movie. It is yeah. definitely something, especially any interactions with him and Mouse. It, it's it's really poignant at times, just what he is telling him. Again, not going too far into details because we do want you all to check this movie out. But some of their conversations from an event that Meek played a hand in that is affecting Mouse yeah. is really important because yeah. it's, it's him putting perspective on this young kid of getting out of life what you should instead of taking it out what people expect you to take out of it. And it yeah. works really well. But then he also gets that from Will Collette's character, 
who's the cop who's like mentoring him again amazingly from the same situation <laughs> that is affecting him with Meek Mill. Yeah. And just just to have two strong black male leads playing a mentorship role to a kid in a film, one is close to unheard of. We have not seen we have not seen something of that nature in a while. But for both of them from two different ends of the spectrum to still agree with each other about him yeah, and do everything for him to make his life better. And it is a scene at the end. Again, I'm not going to spoil it. It is a scene at the end between basically all three of them, which is speaks volumes that at that point it blew me away with, with, with Meek and what his character goes through, what his character does, Will's character, what happens with, and it's just, it's a very poignant, position they put um those two male leads in because there are other older characters in it but they're kind of side yeah. characters whether it be mouse's mom and just the struggles of being a single mom raising a kid in this type of environment yeah and trying to avoid a fate that was led to one of her other kids with this kid granted yeah. it's the typical i don't want to say it's the typical black movie story in a way but yeah. here it is executed really well like everything is thought provoking it's not just i'm gonna throw this at you and you you know it's coming and then we'll see what happens it, it more leads to giving room for these young actors the older actors the not so experienced actors room to breathe in their roles you kind of need that in this type of movie to bring a different approach than what you're going to get from any other film yeah i completely agree and one thing i was going to even like double down on is when it comes to like the actual story Pinging off what Lucas was saying about, you know, both male leads, the way that they're trying to save this kid's soul, it, it kind of also symbolizes like there's a care and a concern for African-American kid in the same exact situation. Mm -hmm. Like the movie has something to say to motivate something out of something. It's not just oh, we're going to create dramatic flair for no good reason, or we're going to put this situation here for no good reason. Like, no, there's a very fundamental point that what they're doing is trying to reach out and show somebody, like, no, there is totally another way. And if that can transcend from, you know, a film or, you know, a show or whatever, and actually somebody really get it, that's everything. Because one of the things about the character like Lamont uh, Lamont got seduced by looking at somebody that, you know, was underneath Meek Mill's character. He was like, oh, man, he's doing it a different way. And he's not sitting there just like running a bike shop. He's not sitting there. He's like living it up. And so Lamont was like, yo, I'm going to make my opportunity and do what I got to do. You know, and that in and of itself is always what happens. It's a cycle. Mm -hmm. And from Meek Mill's character, like he's been on that road and he knew what that could happen. He knew the ramifications of it. And I think for me, looking at it as a dad, looking at the story, the sad part about both, you know, the detective and Meek Mill's character is a lot of moments they didn't have any control over the situation. Mm -hmm. They could threaten Mouse, they could threaten the kids. You know, they could, you know, forcibly tell them not to do stuff. They could cut them off. But at the end of the day, the kid makes up his mind what he wants to do. And that's one of the things as a father, like, that's why I pray for my child now. You know what I'm saying? Because eventually he's going to have to make his own decision or she's going to have to make her own decisions about whatever happens. And that's the scariest part, because even though they both have really good, well intentions, the kid can still make this terrible move. And in one second, it changes everything. And you get to see that in multiple different moments. Specifically, I think in the third act, there's a there's a moment, a judgment call that that mm -hmm. judgment call, you know, just changes everything, you know. And that's real. You know what I'm saying? From a life standpoint, that's real. And you know, me and Lucas can attest, like we've probably gone through life, you know, and seen some stuff and seen some family members or seen some friends make that wrong judgment call but by grace of god like we're here and you know if this movie in some way shape or form can you know counter that by showing them not just the 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 bad stuff but also the good stuff in both aspects i think that this is this is an important film more than anything and it makes sense why 
Um, it got like the awards and the Sundance awards that it got. It's not just it's not just a movie for the sake of a movie. It's about the soul of you know the youth ultimately. It, the soul of a young black man, which is highly important in the. It's amazing that this film is coming out now where I think if everything that has transpired since it was supposed to come out, if it would have came out before that, it wouldn't have the impact that it could have. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like th this film has a very strong impact about the meaning of having male role models in a kid's life. Yeah. If, again, if you don't have your father, that's fine. Let's as a community, where are those other people you can look up to? to help guide you and to understand that kids will be kids. They yeah. will make mistakes. The yeah. key part is when they make mistakes, you don't allow them to stay in their mistake. Yeah. You have to lift them back up. And that's what this movie really poignantly shows with Mouse's character about just how many times he falls down and how yeah. it's one of them there to lift him up. Yeah. And in by you mean different and by two different ways lift yeah. him up because yeah. you have that one guy who's always been the good guy trying to keep you on that path versus someone who's gone down the road he believes that you could be heading down mm -hmm. he knows where that road is going to lead to and he's trying to pull you out of it and yeah. even with the conflict with both of them we still see a kid make kid decisions yeah 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 but um as far as uh, I think the way they did the cinematography, I think that it was captured pretty well. A lot of the wide shots actually worked really well for a lot of the biker mm -hmm. scenes, and then just the atmosphere and just um, you know, just from the look of it, like it felt like Baltimore in uh, certain, certain yeah, shots. Definitely um, feels like Baltimore. <laughs> and, and even when it came to like uh, the music choices, like it wasn't just like for the heck of it. Like it seemed like. Somebody did the research. And so I, I really do appreciate the way they kind of did this film. But um, I don't have anything else. You got anything else? Uh, oh, shout out to Will Smith and Jay, Jada Pickett Smith for this movie. True. This, is, this is their movie. True. Yeah, like that was one like that. It's part of the reason why I initially wanted to see it. I remember seeing the trailer for it and then finding out they were involved. And I said, well, this seems interesting to place this in Baltimore mm -hmm. and just... Trust me, anyone who goes in to see it, this is something you can watch. It it, it language may bother some of you. Um, oh, yeah. The mild violence may bother some of you. But if you can get past that, if you have a teenage son or even a teenage daughter, like any teenagers that need to understand like how life can work and how the decisions that you make will affect other people. This is something you can sit down with the family, see, and then have a discussion about. That's the most important thing in the world, especially with teenagers, is having discussions. Speaking of one who plays a very prominent role in a 19-year-old who makes some of the worst decisions humanly possible at times, but because they got it just enough, they don't go down that un, un not unbreakable, but um, that pathway they can't return from. Yeah, but like it. That's why it's highly important to watch this with them. Enjoy it. Great performances in this movie. The yeah. director Soto is his last name. I can't remember his first name. Uh, Angel. 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 Yeah. Uh, Manuel. Yeah. Like it. It great work with this film. It, it. It's. It's something that blew me away. It's something that brought me to tears when I first saw it. Yeah. And same. Same. Like that. 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 That's the most important thing. This is something that brought me to tears when I first saw it because you feel the characters. You feel yeah. every little thing about it. There are no wasted characters in this story. And that's another thing that does not happen in a lot of black cinema. Sometimes we sure. do get throwaway characters that no one cares about. Every character here has a purpose, a strong purpose that leads to a bigger story. And I yeah. think you all are going to enjoy it for that reason. Yeah. And again, this is uh, rated R. Um, there is violence. Um, there is some really rough scenes. So yeah. if you choose to watch this, like Lucas said, please watch it with your kids or watch it first so you can be able to help navigate your own emotions through it mm -hmm. and then help them be able to comfortably understand and get through it as well. But because it is very important. It is currently right now on HBO Max. You can check it out immediately um, and let us know what you think about it in the comments. Oh, you, below. you didn't give it a score, Sam. You messing what up, Sam. What are you giving us a score? <laughs> <laughs> what are you giving us yeah. a score? 
here's the weird part. Um, I actually, we, we I did a review of this when it came out, and we had to hold the review. And That's I still, right. Yep, and I still have my review, so I'm gonna give it the same score I gave it during my review after seeing it. After it made me cry, I gave it a nine out of ten because it really made me cry. I saw this movie, <laughs> like <laughs> it was so powerful. Listen, it it. I was I went to this is one of the last times I had been in an actual theater was to see this movie. Mm-hmm. And from the moment the end credit started, I was crying bef- way before the end credit started. I had to sit in the theater for a minute because I didn't want to step outside with all the rest of the mm-hmm. critics and the press there and mm-hmm. let them see the tears and everything. So I had to hold it in. <clears throat> then I cried again when I got to the car. It's like <laughs> It's a, it's a powerful movie. I'll say that. Yeah, I'll just say that it's a powerful movie. Yeah. Um. When I watched it, I think I gave it an eight point five. It was either eight point five or nine out of ten. I think I'm arrested at an eight point five. Um. It was very powerful, man. I I was gone. I was done. Like that. <laughs> the last what fifteen minutes, I was done. Oh yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. Man, that was, was it. Was done. Um. Hmm. I ain't gonna go there anyway. <laughs> Hope y'all enjoyed this review. <laughs> I'm gonna go because I just had a flashback. Um, all right, talk to you guys a little later on. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell button, go down to the description bar below. You can check out Lucas on Twitter, check out me on Twitter, have conversations with us, and we will be back for more discussions. Peace, guys.